Dr. Erica with Rosie Research, and today we're going to look at one of the activities in our Presidential Science series, and it involves Thomas Jefferson and a little bit of spy science. So in the Revolutionary War, Thomas Jefferson needed to send lots of messages, and he couldn't really send those messages in plain English because they were probably going to get intercepted, right? They had to give these messages through carriers, and maybe the courier was disingenuous and working for the other side and was going to read the messages and deliver the information. Or maybe the courier would get stopped along the way by enemy forces and they were going to take things from them. So what Thomas Jefferson did is he made what's called a cipher wheel. And that's a wheel that has all of these disks on it. And each disk has the whole alphabet. And you can arrange that disk to write whatever you want, like retreat now. And then you look at a different row, any of the other 25 different rows, and you'll get a similar thing. So then when the person on the other side of the message gets this gibberish, G, J, H, Q, L, they can plug that into their cipher wheel, and they can look around it for some line that doesn't look like gibberish, and that's the line, that's the message. These things are really hard to crack. For Thomas Jefferson, with 36 different wheels, there was a three followed by 41 zeros ways to put those wheels together. So not only did you need to have sort of, because the alphabet's all gibberish inside each wheel, you not only had to know what the wheels looked like, you had to know the order of the wheels. So in ours, we give you an order at the very bottom, and that's the generic order. So you need to put that order on to be able to solve our puzzle. But if you have a friend or a neighbor that you want to send secure messages to, you could put your wheels on in a different order, just as long as you and your friend have the same order of wheels. And all of the wheels have numbers on them. For us, we only have eight wheels. And even with just eight wheels, there's more than 40,000 ways that we can put the wheels on our cipher wheel. So it's a really hard encryption to cut. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut out all of these little cipher wheels and then we'll tape them onto this. So let's cut these guys out. Alright, so I have all of my eight wheels cut out and you'll notice at the top line of each wheel is a number, one through eight. And on the bottom of that sheet, it tells you what order to put your cipher wheels on. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape the cipher wheels onto a simple TP tube um, in these this order. So we'll put the three five seven one four two six eight on. If you put it in a different order and you plug in the same message we gave you, you'll get total gibberish because your wheels aren't put on in the right order. Which is one of sort of the nice things about this whole setup. Thomas Jefferson could have had a list of people he wanted to communicate with and he could change the order of his cipher wheels so that if he sent one over to this general, it couldn't be read by a different general. It could only be read by certain people, which is kind of a nice trick. So what we're going to do is you just need to wrap it around. So I'm going to find my number three. Let's see where that's at. Here it is. So I have the number three, and they are made to fit right around a normal toilet paper tube. You'll notice there's this sort of white area that it can overlap with, and that's the area that we're going to put tape on. All right, so now I have all of my guys on the cipher wheel, and we can plug in the code. So if I put L and P, then in next. So once that we have all of our letters in a row, you can start searching this wheel for something that doesn't look like gibberish. When you find it, you'll know what the message is. This is a great spy science activity and also a great way to explore how presidents in the Oval Office have impacted science and where we determine how we're going to direct what we study and what gets developed. Thomas Jefferson is a great example because he was a scientist, an engineer, he did a lot of things, he invented things, um, but even other, uh, other presidents that we might not think of as scientists like James Monroe have really impacted 
how we live our lives. For example, he really pushed the steamboat, which really developed sort of our river system and that way of transportation and changed how we traveled, all because he decided to travel by steamboat. So this is sort of a fun way to have those activities and learn about our presidents and about some fun science. I hope that you've enjoyed this project with us. You can find us on social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also find us on Patreon. You can find us on Teachers Pay Teachers and, of course, on our blog. Thank you so much for joining us, and I can't wait to do another project with you.